All right, and one other way of, um, you know, boosting the narrative, of course, increasing trade, transborder traders. Uh, remember last week we did hear that the federal government has uh, removed the restriction between Ni Nigeria and Niger at the borders for trade. Now, um, a sad one that came out, I think, yesterday is that traders at the borders are beginning to shun Nigeria's uh, currency, the Naira, because of uh, the loss of value. They insist that converting Naira to uh, Cephas, uh, which is what they use at Cotonou area, you know, the French-speaking part, uh, result in a loss of earnings to them. Uh, this is another discouraging factor, you know, to in within African trade, intra Africa. But let's discuss this uh, uh, this morning with the lead consultant and chief executive officer of 3T Impex Trade Academy, Dr. Bami Dele Ayemibo. Mr. Ayemi, uh, Dr. Ayemibo, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for choosing to spend a part of your holiday with us. We appreciate that. Thank you very that. much for having me. Yeah. So um, the cross-border, I mean, we have, of course, restrictions. Remember the last administration led by President uh, Buhari? Yeah, he was very strict and, and put a lot of that. And now we see a little bit of ease in the administration of uh, President Tinubu, Tinubu right now. So we see the border between Niger and Nigeria. Uh, tell us from your perspective, this easing of border trade, is it to our advantage or not? I know we have programs like AFTA, which is okay. supposed to ease, you know, okay. and all of that, you know, ECOWAS, uh, treaties and agreement. But is it to our advantage or not at this stage? Yes, it's our, it's to our advantage. Nigerian. You know, I mean, Nigeria is a very big country, and in as much as our export volume is not very high right now, but we are still doing a lot, lot better than Niger. Import of Nigeria, of, of uh, product from Niger to Nigeria is just about, about $100 million. Nigeria is about $300 million. So we are doing times three. So we are at an advantage ensuring the border is open for us to be able to trade with Niger. So, in my opinion, it's a better decision because we are losing and the number of businesses are affected because of that. Uh, so what about this notion that uh, because it's kind of difficult to clear at our ports and all of that, you see uh, a lot of things are being cleared at those ports and then being moved, maybe sometimes smuggled into Okay, yes. Nigeria. So now, I'm looking at it from an export perspective. Now, you're very correct in the sense that uh, people sometimes smuggle goods into Nigerian border, even when the border is closed. It doesn't stop it. So the issue is we can't stop that by closing the border. Rather, we are fixing Nigerian port to make it more competitive for people to be able to come in, rather than saying we want to close. Closing the border, you close it, you open it. People that want to do illicit business will still have to do, they are still going to do illicit business. So you see people crossing the border and moving good across the border, even though it's been closed. So, but it's good is open now. I'm looking at it from the export perspective, not from what we are bringing in, but what we can take out to be able to create a lot of jobs locally. And you're talking about AFCFT. So that's the more reason. So if we are starting AFCFT, we have ratified AFC, we can't be closing border. We should be thinking of how we can join the guided trade initiative and be able to trade in Africa rather than closing our border. Mm, but is it not a threat to some domestic industries? Now, um, I tried to check a number of products that Nigeria will trade in AFCFTA. It's not a threat. To, you know, there's this concern about being threat. When Nigeria did not sign AFCFTA, the f a number of African countries were shocked that they were thinking Nigeria is going to dominate and we're going to come in. That why are we pulling back? Because they know us as being very aggressive, wanting to do business. So why are you afraid? So when we signed, it was, I mean, it was a welcome development that we signed. So when you check most of the product that Africa currently import from even around the world, that Nigeria is capable of exporting, we should be focused on how we can export those products rather than thinking that they are going to enter our border. Because when you check the competitive index in, in Africa, Nigeria is still doing a lot better than many African countries. So rather than uh, protecting ourselves and say we don't want people to come into our market, why, why they are coming in, why can't we go out also? But the truth is, not much is coming into Nigeria from Africa. A majority of Nigerian export either import or trade generally is far, far beyond Africa than Africa. After all, intra-African trade... But they come trade, in, I mean, they, they, come from trade, out, just, you know. they come from outside Africa, but they come in through our neighboring countries. Those are elites. I'm talking about 
legal trade. Those are illicit trade. Things that Nigeria naturally would not allow, that people are uh, was smuggling in. Smuggling Opening them. the border will not stop that. If it's illicit in Nigeria, it's illegal. If the duty is high, the duty is high. If the government burned, the government abandoned it. So anybody doing illegal trade, but I'm talking about people that are doing legal trade now that opening our border is a lot better for us. And what we should be doing is how we can grow the non export to be able to take advantage of AFCFT rather than closing our border. Mm. So I think it's a well development that the president have done. All right, so now that uh, we hear stories of uh, some traders at the border shunning Nigerians' currency because of the drop, well, we, we, appreciate, we appreciate the gain we've been having for more than two weeks now, uh, but it doesn't seem to settle down with them because at this point they say uh, having to trade in Naira is a loss to them. You know, so this is why we must now take non-oil export a lot seriously to be able to show up the value of Naira. What the government is doing right now is okay, but it's in the temporary. I mean, we can't continue to do this for a very long time. I mean, the NPR has gone up, investment By is coming in. By this you in. mean intervention of the CBN? Let me just... No, 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 I'm talking about... Okay, so NPR has gone up. So Nigeria is looking at a place people want to invest because of Treasury Bill and a number of other government uh, instruments. So now investment is coming in. So FX is flowing in, rate is coming down. But it's not sustainable. We now must generate Forex ourselves because those money that are coming are going to go out at some point. So what is happening at the border is to let us know that, look, even our neighbor are rejoining our currency because our value is going down. So we must grow non oil export. I think that's what we should be having conversation around now. Having, I mean, to a large extent, CBN is doing a lot. There seems to be a synergy between the fiscal policy and the monetary policy to stabilize the economy. But now, can we begin to now take non oil export growth very more seriously? Because I'm not seeing a lot of that in the effort being made by the government, both on the fiscal side and monetary side. Mm, well, I mean, because when you say that um, you're seeing the collaboration more obvious, I'd like for you to point that out, some points where you have seen that. And yes, we see, uh, especially since uh, the governor Cardoso took over, we've seen a lot of efforts. I mean, we, have, we cannot count the statements and the circulars we have seen. But what about the fiscal side? Are we really seeing movement? No, we are not seeing enough movement there yet. And that's where I said, because what CBN is trying to do is, in all, almost all the intervention that the last administration went into, CBN said, look, that's not our job. And the reason that why, why CBN went into before, because of the, the fiscal side, we're not doing enough. But I think it would have been good for CBN to work with them at that time, to be able to get them to do what they need to do. So for example, you feel there's a need for intervention in a particular sector, why don't you support the ministry in question to be able to achieve that? That's exactly what I think we should be, we should be looking at. But now we're not seeing that in terms of, like you said, non oil export. So for example, I'm expecting by now, we should be hearing the president talk a lot about non oil export, the minister of trade, minister of finance, saying a lot about non oil export trade. We're not hearing this, I mean, statement that shows that this is what the government wants to do. Let me give you an example. So we have ambassadors around the world. Our ambassadors should have a target, like ambassadors in Nigeria have. We have had a situation where we had, uh, we do some program with some, with the National Banking and Finance, I mentioned experience studies, and we, on trade. And we see ambass uh, embassies sending their staff, Nigerians, to come and train to be able to develop Nigeria market for those countries abroad. So we're not seeing that in Nigeria. I think Nigerian ambassadors should have KPI. You must double Nigerian export to your country, else you lose your job. Something that will make them to sit up. So that at the end of the day, they know, if I'm in this country, in the next one year, this is the volume of trade of Nigeria in this country, we must do it for this country. So they can see themselves as marketing Nigeria in those countries. We're not seeing that right now. I think that's a challenge. So I'm, that's what I'm saying that maybe, no, no, uh, the idea of body language, if you see body language of President Fesbola or Metinubu, maybe that will make them begin to consider that as something we need to do at this time. Mm, I guess another discouraging factor to that would also be the operating environment right here. We've had manufacturers grown uh, with this electricity hike. You know, we're talking of insecurity for the farmers, for most of the raw materials that should come from the farm. So, I mean, if you give them targets, they will ask you, do you have it? ready? Do you have the raw materials? Do you have the crops? Do you have the product? Have you processed anything? Now, you know, okay, I operate within this environment. I'm, I'm not disputing what you've said, but the fact is that Nigeria is exporting. NPC confirmed Nigerian number of products exported increased from about 240 to about 273 or thereabout last year. Nigeria is exporting. What we need to do is to check what are we exporting? Which of them is not affected by this issue you've mentioned that we can increase because indeed we can increase it. So I'm not disputing what you said. So if what, man, what are those if products a, that we can focus on that, you know, at least for, for now, export. the low-hanging low so fruit? Let, let me give you an example. 
We talk a lot about cocoa, right? Cocoa demand in the world is about $10 billion. And we just had surge, a surge of cocoa in price. In price, no. But that's not where I'm going. Um, soya beans demand is about $70 billion. Soya beans. Corn demand is over $30 billion. Now, these are commodities that have not even added value. Even when I decide to begin to add value to it, you see what will happen. Same for cocoa. Cocoa price is going up, but of course, we shouldn't be exporting commodity because we should begin to add value to it to be able to grow. Because if we don't add value to it, I mean, let me, the market side for cocoa is $10 billion. Market side for chocolate is over $30 billion. So he's making money. The Switzerland people, the German people that are adding value to it. So what the government needs to, I know there's a challenge with electricity, I can the like. You know, we are in, you know, we are in a situation where we can't help it. We keep appealing to government to do what they need to do. But the fact is that we need to grow non oil export. Now, if I increase my volume of export, I'm going to drive down the price and cost of production. So we should be looking at those things rather than just say, okay, they have increased the price. Of course, it's not good for the economy. They have complained about it. But in spite of that, the fact is that Nigeria is exporting. But what we need to do now is to increase the volume so as to be able to ensure we sustain the improvement in the value of the Naira. Talk to the private sector, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the private sector will ask you if the government has done the ease of doing business, you know, if that, if that has been taken care of. No. Even, no. even exporting, when you talk about those who are exporting currently, mm -hmm. activities around the ports. No, it's improving. No, I'm an exporter. Mm. It's not there yet, but it's improving. So What has improved? Okay, so last year I was to do a shipment, the clearing of custom. Within two days, I was done with clearing. I had issue moving the goods from um, Lilipon Container Terminal to our papa. It took me five days. That's the problem. So those are the issues I think we have to look over now. So the issue is not with the agency again. Now, because of what the government is doing at Lilipon Container Terminal, another terminal where we have joint inspection, is improving. So we must commend the fact that it's improving. Now, even moving now to the port, I did a shipment this month. It's a lot better. Last year, I spent five days. Now I'm spending about two days. So it's, it's improving. I mean, we should be doing more. I shouldn't be clear. I should be able to do everything within two, one or two days, everything. But it's taking about a week to conclude it. So in as much as there are issues around the port, but we must also acknowledge the fact that there's an improvement. The improvement does not mean we are there yet, though, but I think we are better off than where we were before. <laughs> I think we should end on a good note. It's a holiday. It's a holiday yeah. on a good note. Yeah. Well. At least it's improving. Yes. And we yes. hope they will continue to work on it. Yes. You know, and to continue to improve. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Thank Bamdela Yemibo, lead consultant and chief executive officer of 3T Impex Trade Academy. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having me. All right, now well, at least we end on the good news for once. <laughs> Let's take a break now. When we come back, we'll head to the market. We couldn't take Caleb yesterday. Uh, he's standing by, and we do hope this holiday will not be smeared by a network challenge. So we'll talk to Caleb after the break. Just stay with us. <laughs>